Hello and welcome to part one of another Let's Play Dwarf Fortress. And um, the reason I'm doing this now, even though I said I was going to wait, is um, I bought Anno 2070 the other day, planning on Let's Playing that. And honestly, it's I'm just not too keen on the game. So uh, I was going to stick to just Homeworld for a while, but I'm stuck on that right now as well. And I really didn't want to leave it with uh, just uploading nothing. So I decided we'll start up another fortress. I'll be picking up where I left off on the name list. So if you didn't get a dwarf in the last fort, you should get one in this one before too long. There's only like 20 or 30 so names on the dwarf list. So um, I'll bring you back once I've found a decent place to settle. So while I look around the map, I'll be back in a second. Okay, and we found a place here. It's got um, a little bit of soil, some clay, some deep metal some flux stone and it has a stream called the bellies of simplicity and uh, it's a temperate freshwater swamp we're going to be settling heavily forested thick vegetation surrounded by wilderness in a warm climate so let's uh, embark there we will prepare carefully I'll be back in a second I'm just gonna name these dwarves okay so there's our start in seven and as usual we're gonna go from the top up here we're gonna want two adequate miners normally I would only, normally I would only have a novice woodcutter but I think we'll have a single competent one this time because we're in heavily forested areas we want a carpenter a mason building designer who will also be the crafter and bone carver oh, we're out of points already we must, yeah, we have to have a steel anvil. I hate having a steel anvil. Oh, what did I do? Thought it was new to add something. Huh. Press enter to select what? Escape to abort. Right, that definitely says N for new. So I'll push N and I get this. Apparently I can't have anything new. I have some of everything that's on here. Well, let's uh, take away some of these chestnut crutches. Keep two buckets because you never know when you're going to lose one. I don't need quivers. Two bits of rope. Three bags. Three cloth. Three thread. So this is actually going to be quite a difficult embark by the looks of things. And this guy here, I want to be my mechanic. And he can also be the brewer and herbalist. Two seconds here. Sorry about that there. Now then, there's going to be plenty of vegetation. A what? A cavy bore and a cavy put. I've got no clue what the differences are. What the hell's a cavy? Can I get a description? No, I can't. Okay. Although, cows are damn expensive. We could get a pair of breeding sheep. But I think, honestly, we'll wait for pets to come along for that. Um, no, this time, I think we'll have hens instead of turkeys. Because I always seem to bring turkeys. And then I'm going to want some dwarven ale. Plenty of plump helmet spawns for the farm. Let's see what else can we get? We'll have some cave wheat because I'm pretty sure that can be brewed. Rock nuts, why not? We'll have some of those. Then we'll bring some extra food just to kind of round things off there. So these are our starting seven. And uh, let's embark. Welcome to our new home. Let's make the best of it. Let's start digging. <laughs> it's called Razadum. Well, that's gonna please Raz. Eh. Rax. Sounds very similar to his name. I just realised it's not the same. My bad. 
Hey, nobody ever said I wasn't illiterate. Okay, let's have a proper look at this place here. Okay, we've got a big mountain here full of lakes. Looks like the mud's going to go pretty deep with all this water around, because I know that does add in. Pretty zigzaggy lake right across the middle. It shouldn't be too hard to, for the dwarves to find water here. I mean, look at the place. We're in a swamp, after all. That looks like a pretty good place to dig in. Because we could uh, sort of dig it out around here. Probably empty off them lakes. But it's pretty close to the top of the map as well. And pretty far away from the river. I'm assuming there's going to be fish in there. What's on the other side of this river? Not much. Okay, well, how deep is this river then? Open space, river. So there's actually open space there, so it's actually one down. So we could put a well there. We have loads of dense grass and stuff. Okay. And what pack animals did we have with us this time? We have a camel. A stray two humped camel. And what else? There must be something else. But I think, honestly, we're just going to dig down here. Hopefully we'll get past the mud quick-ish. I don't want to be stuck with the mud for ages. And uh, we'll have some trees chopped down. Ch take out a big chunk of them here. And then pause the game. this level will be perfect for farming because the water does kind of seep through all the mud make it perfect for farms but uh, for now we have a few more important things to be worrying about than getting the farming up and running just leave a nice wide corridor for it I want to get down past these lakes and the river as quickly as I can and into something that the dwarves will be happy to make a home in Now, there's no point building a stockpile yet. I'm pretty sure that's still mud. I don't think that's stone yet, and if it is, it won't grow very far. See, so actually, what is this stuff? Mudstone. I'm not sure if mudstone actually counts as mud or as a stone. It looks like it's a stone, but, um,. I think I want to go a bit deeper before I start building my fortress anyway. And I'm going to try and do things a little bit differently in this fort. Because my other forts have always been like a trade floor, a residential floor, a dining floor. And I'm getting a bit bored with the same setup so I'm going to try and do things a little bit differently. And if you've got any ideas on something you, you want me to try out, I'll, uh, I'll see if I can do it. But I won't promise that I'll do it well. And I won't promise that I won't blow my fort up in the process. So we'll go down one or two more levels before we decide where we're actually going to start the fortress off. And I want to see if I can actually try and get quite a bit of this fortress on one big open level. You know, I think we're far enough down now that we won't hit mud again. Although it looks like we will be digging into this mudstone quite a bit. Okay. And like I said, I want to have quite a bit of stuff on one level. So this is going to be the main level for the fort. I'm going to try and get as much stuff on this level as I possibly can.
one too far there. This is going to see a lot of traffic, this area, so make something that looks good but gives them a lot of room as well. And then why not? We'll see about. Is that the middle one? I don't think I can actually get to the middle here. Oh, wait, I can't. I can't. There we go. We'll have a single pillar in the middle. I think that's in the middle anyway. It's close enough. See how things are going up the top here. Let's have a look in this river, see what we can see actually in the river. Gee, what the hell's a G? And why the hell's the like That's a pike. Okay, so we've got fish in the river. What's a G? A Lognos got I've got no clue what that is, but it sounds to me like the Loch Ness monster. This is always the part of the fort that I get quite bored waiting for, which is waiting for the miners to get the fort started. So I think I'll just cut this out. Once we've got this bit dug out and I've shown you where things are going to be, I'll cut everything out while I designate it. Just because I'm sure by now you know what that looks like. In fact, I'll just stop the recording here, and uh, you can have a look once I've got everything designated, and once a little bit of it's been dug out. I'll see you in a little while. Okay, and so we've designated out some pathways here. I'm just going to make room for a couple of basic workshops. We don't need anything particularly fancy for these yet. Just a carpenter and a mason, maybe a mechanic for now, to get the well up and running. I want that done as soon as possible. We're going to have residentials going to be on, well, we'll call this the east wing. That's the west wing is for workshops. Up to the north will be the dining hall eventually. Obviously these pathways will extend, like be extended out a bit later on. For now we just want the basics done. We did hit a couple of gems but only a little bit of jade, nothing particularly fancy. There we go. So once we've got some workshops done we'll get a, get a start on building some beds and some doors. Hopefully get the well started. I'll be having storehouses like down here, the side where the stairwell's on. when it comes time to make more workshops we'll have them up behind these ones in a kind of grid formation let's see we want the carpenter, the mason, the crafts dwarf, the mechanic Here come the various dwarves to build the workshops. Okay then. Come on, I need some beds. Mason. Partially constructed. Some doors. Crafts dwarf. I think everyone knows what's coming here. Get to work on the crafts. Mechanic. 
mechanic. Just crank out some mechanisms for now because the mechanic's also the farmer, so he'll be a bit uh, preoccupied later once we get the farm up and running. And uh, if I remember, there will be the dwarf list will be in the description of this video. Hopefully, I remember. I do have a pretty awful memory. Oh, flute solo! You gotta love it. Who wants a guitar when you've got a flute? Okay, let's uh, get to work on digging out some of these storehouses now. Have them 10 by 10. Just get that first one done for now, and that'll be for stone or for wood, one of the two. Probably for wood, so we can get that all down here, because the stone's just lying around on the floor for now. And at least with this mud stone, it's not on like every other block, like some of the more dense stone you can come across. And uh, it's easy to mine through as well. Obviously the miners decide now is a good time to take a break and have some food. Laziness I tell you, laziness. And apparently Seamorth just got voted the expedition leader. I believe he's my crafts dwarf. I think he was actually a carpenter last time. Actually I don't think Seamorth even made it into the ice fort, it was the fort before that he was a carpenter. How many beds have we got? Start getting these up before dwarves start falling asleep in the mud and getting depressed. Not enough for everybody yet, I don't think. Nope. But at least there's enough beds to go around now, as long as a couple of them share until we have all the rooms done. wood stockpile there and obviously the miners decide now is a good time to take a break and have some food laziness I tell you laziness and apparently Seamorth just got voted the expedition leader I believe he's my crafts dwarf I think he was actually a carpenter last time actually I don't think Seamorth even made it into the ice fort it was a fort before that he was a carpenter See how many beds have we got? Start getting these up before dwarves start falling asleep in the mud and getting depressed. Not enough for everybody yet, I don't think. Nope. 
but at least there's enough beds to go around now as long as a couple of them share until we have all the rooms done. stockpile there that should keep everybody occupied for quite a while I would imagine how many doors do we have and we have all 10 mudstone doors already Now it's just going to be a matter of uh, waiting for these dwarves to finish these few jobs I've assigned them before I assign anything else out. And the mason. Build me some blocks for the well. Still not sure if that's gonna f if the uh, river is gonna freeze over. Because apparently this place is warm, and I'm not sure if warm means it'll freeze over in the winter. We'll have to wait and see when winter comes. We should have enough alcohol to last us through the first winter, but there's no way it'll last through the second. All those busy little dwarves running around. And uh, if I remember as well, after this video, I'm going to set the population cap, and that'll probably be set to about 30. Because I think that's about that's roughly how many people are on the dwarf list. And then after that, it'll just be babies being born in the fort. is summer. There we go. Now then, because my architect is also my craft dwarf, I'm gonna have to Suspend the rock crafts for now and hope that he builds that well. Make these bedrooms actually to bedrooms so people can claim them because they're a lot happier when they actually have their own possessions. You know, like quarters and fancy beds and fancy cabinets, that kind of stuff. I was a lot happier when they actually have that kind of stuff. And there goes the guy with the mechanical uh, pieces for the well. And then we'll have to keep a close eye on that to make sure it works. Now I think it'll be the mason who will actually come and construct the well.
We'll probably slaughter those animals soon. They're not a breeding pair, so there's not much point in keeping them around. Zero idlers, that's what I like to see. It never lasts long in my forts. By the time I get like 30 dwarves, I can't even keep them all occupied. probably find a lot of people will be mixed between or I'll have a squad of military who in their off time will probably be stone detailers smoothing out the fort I want to get started on these walls quite quickly as well Ah, that means the dwarves can walk in that, so I might have to channel out this river one floor. I'm really not sure if I will have to or not. Well, let's see if we can first. Hopefully we won't lose our dwarves. Just those four squares will be plenty. We just need it deep enough on the section underneath the well. There's the miner, but he doesn't look too concerned about his job at the moment. He must be doing something else. I'm not particularly sure what. Oh, he's went to his room for a nap. Maybe they just can't get to where I'm trying to send them. What if I designate this part to be channeled out as well? Just here, so that they can actually reach where they're going. Because there isn't any way in or out of there, because there's no ramps. There we go. I'm not sure where the dwarf went. He went back downstairs. Okay, so we just can't designate that out by the looks of it. So hopefully that means it's deep enough for the for the water. In the well and such. Now then I suppose we should get this farm up and running. It's not really something I want to delay for too long and eat all of our food reserves. We'll just have this done 20 by 20. That'll be plenty of room to farm like for the rest of the fortress forever. Thankfully, this gets dug through like extremely quickly, even by novice miners it get through this quite quickly as well. Let's have this deconstructed. Mason and Carpenter, I want another 10 doors and another 10 beds. I want those ready for when the next settlers turn up. Because I fell behind on my beds last time. And it ended up being quite a pain in to try and catch up. And it actually contributed to the fall of that fortress because everyone was in a pissy mood they didn't have their own rooms or any of their own possessions really I'm gonna try and not have my farm do plump helmets all year round I at least want one season of say like cave wheat or whatever those rock nuts grow from Crafts dwarf, I did already unsuspend that. But add. No. Add. No. Cancel. Add. Wooden. 
nest box. I want three of those oh. for the chickens. Everybody's busy with the jobs still. We're actually getting quite a bit done to say we only have seven dwarves. There's plenty of room in there now for a farm plot, so we can get the farmer doing his work. There we go. Nice big plot. Plenty of room for all kinds of stuff. Before we plant anything in that though, we will need a food stockpile, otherwise the food tends to just rot in the fields. I wonder if you can smooth mud down. Never really thought about it. I'm guessing not though. And uh, this place still needs a name. I'm trying to think of something that involves a swamp. obviously we've settled a swamp and it's called Razzle or something or Razzle of Don or something but uh, I don't really like those impronounceable dwarf names for whatever it is they call the places I'm sure we'll think of something I'm still not even sure if this well works. I'm not sure if you can check like the water levels in the bucket. Maybe? Nope. Well, he is hoping, eh? He is hoping. Because I'm not really sure how I would deepen that river. It seems to be flowing too fast for the dwarves to even attempt it. Unless I dig out a hole like around here somewhere and then have the water run into it. Which seems like it might be my better idea. But it will mean using up the other buckets, so if it doesn't work, I'll have to just carve a few more of those out. Which I think we will do to be honest. Actually, someone told me a way to check that. I I've remembered something useful. Yes, that is. That's a water source. Good. So hopefully they can use it. Like in the uh, the winter time. Go food stockpile. And then I'll designate out these other ten rooms.
Now then, that field has been made a field properly, it's been tilled. Um, we'll have cave wheat in the summer, what's A? Um, dimple cups in the spring, plump helmets in the autumn and winter. Lovely. That farm's big enough that it should easily produce for seven dwarves for now. I'm actually hoping we get a fisher dwarf because there seems to be quite a lot of fish in this swamp. Let's see, where's my mason? We're going to want to dig that dining room out soon, or at least get a good start on it. So if up here is going to be common areas, I'm not sure where I really want my barracks. I might even build that on the surface. Like up here out of mudstone. I think I'm going to build off like a, cap, a uh, capped off well for the winter time. I think I'll get on that as soon as I can. Once I've got the, uh, the basic dining hall dug out, I'll do the well, and then I'll try and make the dining hall fancy. And uh, we'll just do a nice basic design for now on this. Might as well start it from here. Do my usual spready out thing up until we reach the end of the corridor. Because I really like this kind of design. It's not exactly easy to make things look pretty in pixels. too far. Now I don't want my normal one square columns. I want something a little bit different this time, but I'm not sure what. Maybe like a cross column in the center of the room. Like here, and then one, two, three. And like that. Yeah, I like that. Actually that dining room looks plenty fancy as it is. Don't think there's really going to be. I need to fancy that up when we're done. We actually have a few too many beds. Well means we don't have to build more for a little while longer at least. Oh, door, not armor stand. There we go. It's doing so many things at once here. Some more dwarfs here. Oh, 
really? Well, who said I wanted dwarves? We have one dwarf. Really? Let's check that on dwarf there. We'll see how many actually turned up this time. Five. I'll name them in a minute. I want to get this dining hall set up and get everyone inside first. Let's uh, zoom to BV Bob. Looks like the miners are on their breaks having a nap. But at least we have rooms for these new dwarves. There we go. I tell you what, I'll uh, pause the video here and name those miners. Uh, miners, I'll name those new guys. Back in a second. Okay, we're back there, and the new dwarves are Jake Cancy 3, Kez Sharan, uh, the Helix 26, and Exoterius, as well as Pasoki. Sorry if I got your name wrong there, but that's how I read it. You are the new additions to the fortress. Uh, zoom back down here to where the fun is. You should already have claimed your rooms and I'll let you have a look at your skills here. Let's refresh that. Looks like one of you has everything to do with wood. That's Exoterius. You do carpentry, wood cutting and crossbow making. That looks like those are your skills. You do have fish cleaning as well as shearing, but I don't think we'll bother with that. Let's see here, Pasuki, apparently you're good with wood, uh, wood cutting. You're level 4 at that, so we'll take that off Exoterius. Um, I'm pretty sure Jay can see. And Kessiran. You two are both children, I think. Let's see here. Helix. You actually don't have any skills, so I'm going to assign you all of the fishing, and you'll get your own workshop for cleaning the fish as well. So we'll get rid of that for now. We'll build workshop. Is it F? For, no, that's for forge. Let's have a look, see if we can find you the fisher's workshop. The fishery, there we go. And that will be what you do from now on. Apparently I've struck bloodstone up here, another gem. Let's see, how are the farms doing? Yep, stuff, be stuff has been planted, that's good. See, what does this actually need for fishery? Needs any fishing. Well, you have fishing, you're just not very good at it. But I'm assuming you're trekking all the way from the other side of the map, so it might take you a while to get here and to build your fishery. And uh, same off, just stole the stones that were in there anyway. He wants to. Ha he wants you to have a hard time because he's a bit of an asshole like that. There are plenty of fish and I'm assuming there's plenty of mussels in these smaller ponds. So I see you having a pretty easy time of doing fishing. Let's see if it actually says you're going to fish. Yep, you are off to fish. Lovely. Now then, I do need someone with the unenviable task of stone detailing. And you know what? Looks like you've been nominated for Sogi. And I'll give you a bit of masonry as well. Because you'll also be building walls. 
not the most glamorous job, but we do need general uh, lackey type people to do the grunt work. I'll make sure you get something better, either with your next dwarf if this one dies, or in the next fort if he survives the whole thing. And you will probably join the military a little bit later on when we have one. There's plenty of fish. Actually, it depends on the season. There might not be many fish. Looks like there's not many in the river. Looks like there's... Oh no, there's a few over there. But it looks like these ponds are just empty. It doesn't look like there's anything useful in them. Ah, it's autumn. New season is autumn. Let's see, how's this bloody dining hall coming along? Uh, it's not far away from being done because once they're done with that, I do want them to um, build me that well. And it looks like Seamoth is already up to. Uh, Legendary craft, craft dwarf, or at least master, because he's making masterpieces. Those will be useful when it comes for trade. Okay, then time to set the first tails in our what will eventually be, hopefully, a legendary dining hall. It looks like I just wasted a table there, even with three around it. Never mind. I needed one for a central point for the dining room. There we go. Meeting hall, yes. So now all the idle dwarves will go there, and we can put some levers in the walls and such for when we get drawbridges up and running. Now then, let's see about that well, because I do have a general idea of what how I want to set this up. So I'm going to designate and channel, and I think here looks about good. We'll have it year big. See, the problem I'm going to have is blocking it back off afterwards, unless we have the connection underground. See, and then what I'm going to want is to channel it out down again so that it goes two levels deep. And then we can have the well itself on one of the four center blocks. Build floor. Just expand this over the whole thing for now. Let's dawn and then Q. I want to stop the construction of one piece of flooring there. And 
hopefully this works out okay and counts as being inside. But of course we have to wait for the masons to uh, build the floor before we can build the well. He's actually dragging the mudstones out from inside there. Or he was for a while. I know I do have two masons but one of them is also my stone smoother. I forgot his name. It's Pakashi I think. Once again, sorry if I'm getting that wrong. I am really not good with names. There's nothing more to catch. You just being lazy. You know what? I think we will flood this now work out a way to reseal it later. So, cancel this one for now. Okay, here we go. Just wanted to make sure it was that one was the last to go. Let's see how this water fills up. Yep, looks like it's cycling through a little bit because there's mud and dust being kicked up. But now I have to find a way to seal that back off. I should have put a floodgate there before I did it. That's what I should have done. I'll need more blocks. Mason's going to be busy for a little while. Blocks. And then what I think we'll do is rip down the old well. Oh wait, we'll lose all the parts if we do that. The will go flooding downstream, so we might as well keep it up. And somebody's already got quite a fancy bedroom. Who is that? I think that's Yamoroth actually, with a fancy room. Yes it is, he's only got one section of wall that needs smoothing out. Looks like the mud has calmed down quite a bit. Actually, looking at it, no, it really hasn't. But hopefully with the water being so deep, we can drop a well in it. We might actually have to build the well a floor above that gap, now that I think about it. I tell you what, we'll end this episode off here. I'll have a think about it. And uh, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.